So one of the key concepts that we're going to work on during the class is using Amazon Web Services as a compute resource. By the end of the class, I hope that you'll feel comfortable starting up Amazon instances, accessing them using SSH, running algorithms, running programs, analyzing data on those Amazon instances, retrieving your data from them, and then finally shutting them down and knowing that you're done with the machine. We're going to start with this right away at the beginning of the class as when we go through the series of activities in the class, we're going to be using our Amazon Web Services all of the time to do our computation. So why are we going to use Amazon Web Services? There's a bunch of reasons. By far, the most important reason is that it gives us a unified computational platform. What do I mean by that? So I've prepared an Amazon image, what they call an AMI, an Amazon machine image. And on this AMI, I've installed all of the software that we're going to need for the course in computational genomics. It's set up. I've tested that everything runs. And I've made it so that this image is publicly available. This means that anybody anywhere in the world can go create one of these images, can um, host it on their local Amazon infrastructure. And using the tricks that I'll show you in just a second, for basically for free, you can run through the computational genomics class um, that we're going to work on. So these are our pre-processed, pre-prepared images that I spent my summer building for you. And I've created, initially I've created two different images. There's um, the SDSU computational genomics micro image. And there's the, just the SDSU computational genomics image. The key, the key here is that the micro image, the micro image is designed to run on the free tier of Amazon Web Services. So if you instantiate that image, it won't cost you anything. You can run it using the free resources on Amazon. You can try things out. However, that micro image doesn't have a lot of disk space left after I installed all the software. The standard SDSU computational genomics image is designed to run on a medium-sized server on Amazon Web Services. And it has a few little additional pieces of software that we'll get to later in the course. However, you can't run that on the free tier. So to get going, we're going to use the micro image. We're going to see what capabilities it has. Once we've reached the limits of that capability, we have the computational genomics image, the regular one to fall back on. The other note that I want to make about these images is that from time to time, I'm going to update them. So right now, we're on version 1 of the image. I'll keep a version system going so that you'll be able to see which version is available online. And I'm going to try only to have the most recent version available publicly. Obviously, as time progresses, software is updated, bugs are fixed, changes are made, improvements are made. And so I try and keep these images relatively updated. When you're instantiating your image, take a look and see if you have the most recent version. Just be mindful that there may be more than one version that you can choose from. And of course, you want the most recent version. 
So there's a lot of benefits to using Amazon, in particular, this unified computational platform. It means that everybody has the same system. Whether you're running Macs, whether you're running Linux, whether you're running Windows, Windows 7, Windows XP, Windows 10, Windows 9, whatever you're running, you have this, the access to the same computer, the same programs, installed in the same way. I can show you the commands, and they should run correctly. The downside is the potential cost. Now, as I'm going to show you, we're going to use an educational allotment from Amazon Web Services to run through this class. I've also mentioned that the SDSU Computational Genomics microimage runs on the T2 micro free tier from Amazon. But if you want to run the standard computational genomics image, if you've got a lot of data analysis to do, if you're churning through a lot of genomes, you may suddenly realize that this becomes expensive. Amazon has a lot of ways of controlling expense. You can set alarms so that if you're spending more than $10 a month or $100 a month or 1000 whatever you're comfortable with, they'll send you an email and say, hey, you should take a look at your account and see what's going on. But the downside is that there may be a cost associated with this, although there should not be a cost associated with running through the class. If you don't want to use Amazon, if for some reason you're analyzing data that you don't want to put on Amazon's cloud, or you're uncomfortable with the potential cost associated with it, then in the course material, I've provided instructions to install all of the software. And we install it on a base image. And for Amazon, we're using a base image, which is a Linux operating system called CentOS. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. Um, but basically, I've provided full instructions to install the software. Now, I can't help you install that software on your machine because there's just not enough hours in the day. But between the instructions that I've provided in the course material and Google and um, looking at the websites associated with the software, I'm pretty confident that you can install all of the software as well on your machine. However, for the class, we're going to use Amazon machine images. Um, we're going to use an educational allotment. And I'll talk about how to get that educational allotment in just a second. And um, it should not cost us anything at all.